Sometime after 9 o'clock, he took the pill that took his life. Alexander Neville died of fentanyl poisoning in 2020. The California teen was 14 years old. Happy day, great people. Welcome back to another episode of Snapolitical. How you feeling? So glad you're with me in the building. Hope you're off to a wonderful start. Great week, great day. Let's get into this. I've been covering um, quite a few things about youth from drugs, from being online, having experiences where they're meeting scammers and it's cost teens their lives. And now we're talking about parents being having, having to be taught about new preventative methods for their kids in the event of a possible drug overdose you know I, I'm just I, I don't know what else to say it, it's so sad other than we truly have got to ramp up our prayer life for our youth and these fa and our families in communities now we need some solutions I'm a solution based person I don't like to perseverate on the problem very long without a solution I know there are, are a gazillion and ten youth programs across the United States for problematic youth used to have drug um, addictions for um, building up self-esteem encouragement motivation confidence all of that and yet we still are having the problems that we're having right now so what is it what what do we need so let's let's talk about some solutions these parents are being taught how to use naloxone after a string of opioid poisonings you know it we really have to step in and find some solutions for our youth great people and highlight and pump up the benefits of being healthy of being drug free sometime after nine o'clock he took the pill that took his life <clears throat> alexander neville died of fentanyl poisoning in 2020 the california teen was 14 years old just barely out of middle school you feel like a complete failure right you're we're beating ourselves up over it all the time his mother, Amy, confessing she didn't even know what fentanyl was. Death blindsided us. Uh, no one was talking about fentanyl at the time. According to Amy, her teenage son thought he was taking oxycodone. But a toxicology report later revealed that one fatal pill was laced with fentanyl. It was a life or death situation, and I didn't realize that. A threat that's now made its way to Cleveland, Texas. There's no cap. A sobering show and tell at a middle school. Ready? That's it. You just saved a life. In a cafeteria where kids eat lunch, parents learning how to use Narcan to potentially save their own child from fentanyl poisoning. It's incomprehensible. Onelia Santos here for her three kids and free Narcan. At first I was like, no, because let's not have this because it's going to give a gateway for these children to go ahead and say, hey, there's something to save me. Let's just try it anyway. And now? And now? We need it. That's, That's right. because parents Thank you, here Mom. are facing something you, they've Mom. never seen before. An explosion you, of opioid-related incidents. Barely three months into the school year, the districts reported 15 EMT calls, eight overdoses, none of them fatal, but four needing Narcan, and even an arrest at one of the middle schools for possession of opioids. If anything were to happen to one of these students, our district would completely feel it. With two high schoolers of her own, the fight is personal for District Nursing Director Lacey Green, who rebuilt campus first aid kits, equipped with a life-saving drug. If it's a situation that they need to give Narcan in, they already have it on them. So yes. Now Narcan so kits are at I'm every campus about. in the district. This is what I'm talking the about. The elementary schools. This is what I'm talking about with solutions. You see a problem, you see a gap, fill it. Feel it. Hopefully, this is going to make its way across the, the USA because now we've seen that this there has been an uprise in this. I don't know if this is over the past couple of years or just the past year. I've heard about it here more recently. So this must mean it's been going on for about a year, maybe even two. But now it's hitting an all time high. So these are the solutions that we need. And these are the proactive people who want to save lives. And unfortunately, this parent lost her kid's life. And there's not always a sign. And that's the scary part. You, you could just see the household it appeared to be you know a nice home parents you know taking great care of the kids so in this situation you know he had activities outlets things to do so what do you do when you just have a curious kid that wants to try because that's the stage of children and adolescents they want to try things just to see that invincibility complex they have it so what do you do you have a solution don't be the parent to say my kid would never don't be that parent to say my kid would never do that I'm gonna always talk about the absolutely not the kid that I don't have yet I am truly learning
learning, soaking all this in because I want to be prepared. It's great to say my kid is going to be an all star, you know, kid that's never going to have any problems. But we know that's just not reality because of TV, YouTube, social media, you know, peer engagement, curiosity, curiosity. So we have to take one. We have to be one step ahead, praying, fasting having them engaged around other youth who are in the church is all wonderful and great. And I'm gonna to continue to encourage it because that's all part of the holistic piece that's gonna help save your kid. Junior Leslie Gonzalez and senior Valeria Trevino say the difference from last year to now, dramatic. Not just in overdoses, but in access to drugs like Percocet, often unknowingly laced with the fatal drug. Oh my gosh. How easy are these drugs to come by? Very easy. How easy? To the point where you could look at someone in your class and you could ask and they would have. Wow. Texas has seen fentanyl related deaths surge 600 percent in just three years. More than 200 of those deaths involving people 18 and under. What's happened since the pandemic with youth is a skyrocketing uh, national epidemic. OK, of since the pandemic, man. Two anxiety years. Anxiety that makes these kids not want to come to school three years now which is what drives dr joy alonzo to come to town halls okay. like cleveland's this is texas to tennessee baltimore to los angeles mm -hmm. no one is spared it's hard man it's just what my kid. i pray for peace a painful reality one amy neville wishes she could rewind yeah. every single day a little bit of information would have gone a long way in our house that night and unfortunately we didn't have that and we paid the price. It's just so amazing how things change because drugs have always been around. And I just remember when I was in high school there, you know, it was kids that was, you know, smoking weed and stuff. But I didn't have, I, I wasn't into that then. When I got to college is when I started wanting to l try different things. And yet, you know, I don't even know if stuff like those pills were even readily accessible when I was in school because I never heard of it. Like never. The most I heard was people smoking cigarettes, you know, and smoking weed and even doing a little cocaine. But the pill, the pill thing, I just never, ever. And it's just amazing how things transition through time because now we didn't have social media when I was growing up. And the internet came when I was in college. I, I mean, I'll never forget. And this thing is like called the internet. And my dad told me about it. I was like, okay, let's let's look. He's like, it's gonna make your schoolwork a lot easier. I was like, okay, cool. Let's get in. Let's get in. It's for real. <laughs> Research is crazy when you're in school. But anyway, guys, I just we have to keep raising the level of awareness. Feel so sorry for that parent because you know, like she said, if they had just had a little bit of information, and I, you know, feel like now we have to be proactive. We can't assume that everything is always great when it seems like it's always great because that is, you know, kids who may suffer from depression and not to say that that young man did, I don't know. But depression hides itself from parents. You know, many kids know how to mask that very well, very well, and, and, and there's no clue, but you gotta dig in, you gotta pry and you gotta dig deep, get in their phone, get on their social media pages, you know, have those conversations with them, get in the conversation with them and their friends. Parents, the, the parents, you know, have a swap meet with friends and parents, you know, it may be a little uncomfortable, but it also could be the one thing that your kid feels comfortable enough to come to you and say, or your parent, the, the friend's parent, and have a sit down. And that could be the conversation that's gonna deter them to be brave, to wanna be, you know, if they feel like they're an outcast at school because they're the ones that's not trying all the stuff, let them feel that way. But they're gonna be another group of kids that are also feeling the same way. And as a parent, you're providing all of the things that your kid needs and then some, so you're not even thinking your mind that they even want would want to try try that or where they wouldn't even be able to get that at school but that's where they're getting it they're getting it through the connection of other friends they're not going to ask to get it from you so i truly say being proactive being preventative is truly the best way truly the best way we're going to keep praying for this that family and praying for our youth across the globe because this is a serious thing what are some solutions as parents that you think you may be able to do have you had those conversations i want us to get in the comment section have you had these types of conversations with your youth 
Did you as a youth have these conversations with your parents? Did you feel comfortable and open enough to talk to your parents about drugs, about cutting school, about, you know, sex, about these things that parents don't like to talk, that kids, I'm sorry, don't like to talk to their parents about because in fear of judgment, being in trouble, ostracized, heckled. Is it a safe space for your kids to come to you um, about these things? And what can you do proactively for yourself to educate yourself on what's going on in your kid's life even before you ask them some of the slang some of the apps because they are a gazillion apps I, I mean I learned a couple of new apps the other day and I was like Lord help me I, I, I can't learn another app you hear me I'm good YouTube Instagram Facebook Twitter um, X then you got Twitch then you got uh, Snapchat then then it's two or three new ones I saw I was like help me no thank you but all these new ones for these parents, for these young kids, you know, and now is your time. Get get in there and learn the apps, what they doing, how they how they choosing to be great. The more you know, the better you'll the better equipped you'll be. I love you guys. I appreciate all your support. Let's get in this comment se comment section, great people, and chop this up and brainstorm some solutions, you know, for these kids in our communities um, on how we can better, you know, empower our youth to be great and make better informed decisions for themselves. Love you guys. Yeah.